for like I come from a generation where we grew up with a lot of human interaction yes. and human touch. So uh, you know, here Siddharth is you know giving such positive uh, you know messages about AI, and we want to hear that also. But somewhere down the line, uh, you know, we are a little apprehensive about mm -hmm. how human relationships uh, will. Uh, happen because what i'm seeing lately is a lot of kids uh, even in restaurants or in family settings mm. only on their uh, even three year olds or two years yeah. old on the uh, you know yeah. screen so yes uh, parenting is going to change the world is changing mm. but how do we adapt with the best possible human possible way i will say mm. uh, you know uh, is uh, is the challenge right now yes you were about to say yes that yes i you know this is such a um, so deep, yeah, difficult and deep topic. Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you uh, look at humanity as a whole, mm -hmm. if as if just suppose humanity is a space and there are clusters of yeah. things in the space, mm -hmm. and they take a deep view from above. Mm -hmm. And what happens is there's so many different concepts and things merging together to form this mm -hmm. whole opinion about what is a human, what is humanity, what is life, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just there is there is this certain hedonism in human beings. Huh. So that hedonism gets perpetuated further when people get the stuff they need right. Oh, on their face, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So yes. hedonism is built in. I think hedonism is a way humans have evolved. Yes. If you come to think of it, mm. millions of years back we were happy with our hunting and gathering. Yes. And then agriculture came up and then there is slow development for humans. What is it that is really driving? Because lions haven't evolved or dogs haven't evolved, I think. I don't think fish has evolved. <laughs> any, any of those animals, you don't see them yeah. evolve per se. Mm, but humans have evolved. Have, yeah. So what is that thing that makes human evolve? Well, I feel to a certain extent hedonism is there. It's like mm. make life... Of course, there's an adventurous spirit. I mean, yes, yeah. To conquer the planet or those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. But then... To some extent, hedonism is there in the sense people want to be more um, comfortable, mm. be uh, com be have things easier. That's why they invented wheels. Maybe. They can go from place A to B faster. Mm. They invented yeah. computers so they can do computation faster yeah. and take more time to do this. Yeah. So that way, this is an invaluable thing. I think that's happening is now you have the world's information and all the things that can make you potentially happy right. at your finger. Yeah. A phone can make you happy. Yeah. And then you are having a sleep on <laughs> toe. It does make you happy. I mean, suppose I, I I am in a mood where I want to see my favorite actor or actress or I see my listen to a favorite movie or just have some jokes. Everyone. Phone is there for you. Everything is in the phone. So that hedonistic thing in the human yeah. mind kicks in. It's like, why should I spend time with my family? I mean, they are not making me happy. I this phone know. is making very me happy. Very true, very true. So very true. I think some of the social constructs and the way parenting happens and the way uh, society interacts with each other, that those norms will also evolve with time, with AI and all this kind of stuff. I things. hope so. I hope so. Yes. Right. So then it becomes okay mm. to have a time when others are busy looking at the phone mm. or I like to say not looking at the phone but busy taking happiness from other sources yeah. and then from people. Yeah, easy to say then do we like Absolutely. he's saying you know everything in moderation is yeah. good but my khudi dekh you like when <laughs> kids are saying mom you are more on the phone now than we are so it is kind of sad but that's the way yeah, life is good. going uh, on and just we need to be aware and yeah. we need to wait when to switch it off you know that's the that's the thing uh, you know time is running out uh, yeah. but i need to know you know like uh, siddhartha is saying it's okay to be restless because human mind needs to know what to do next yeah. you know stagnation is not what life tells us to do mm -hmm. so um what's coming next for you i know you are doing a major uh, music album and yeah. then you're coming out with the third book, so yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I love to talk about that. <laughs> okay. And um, uh, by the way, uh, before we were talking about this, uh, I, in case I forget, thanks for inviting me. And I'd love to kick off 2024 with this <laughs> wonderful conversation I'm having with you. And this is the second time we are meeting, I think. I already talked with you before. Yeah, Zoom, the <laughs> yeah. And I really love your in, in, insightful thoughts and the very fact that you have read my book in details and talking about this. This means a lot to me. So I, I, 
So based on these premises, I mean, I get inspired from everybody around me. People are always asking, see what's next, what's next. Mm. And I feel I was born and I started to do something. And that's why 2024, mm. I'm very excited because mm. I'll be doing two major things. Mm. The first thing is a world music album. Now, world music album, what that really means is, as, mm. as you rightly said, I play many different instruments. Uh, musical instruments. Mm. So for all the world music albums I've heard, for example, we've heard Anushka Shankar mm. and uh, many people. Every person, world music means they collaborate with world musicians. Mm. That's what world music means. But for mm. me, it's, it's a different thing. I, I can play most of these instruments myself, right? I play the mm. sitar, I play guitar, I play drums, mm. percussions, bass, guitar, piano, whatever. Mm. So what this world music really means to me is to how I interpret a particular music mm. of some place or some definition by playing all the music myself. Mm. Because why wow. that's interesting because every <laughs> musician has their own yeah. signature style of playing thing. Mm. So if the same person plays all the instruments, mm. world instruments, right? Mm. Talking about flamenco guitar or sitar, merged together, mm. the sitar on blues or jazz mm. on mandolin, stuff like wow. that. Mm. If I play all those instruments, mm. then there is some coherence and mm. story I can tell mm. better. Mm. So the story that I am tell, trying to say through my music album is through mm. colors. What that means is oh. we have we say at least there are seven colors in the rainbow, mm. uh, but if you extend that, there's nine. Black mm. is a color and white is a color. Mm. I won't get into that. My first novel was about, all about color. Yes, about color. I, I won't get into that, but mm. just imagine these nine different shades of color we mm. have. Then mm. how do you interpret them as music? I mean, that's my interpretation, wow. right? Okay. For example, when you think of red, mm. A different culture might mean different. Yes, very red, true. Yeah? Very true. But in general, one thing mm. that red comes up is danger, maybe. Mm. Mm. Right, something red, like fire is red, burning mm -hmm. red. When you think of white, you think of something pure, something mm. serene. Mm -hmm. When you think of green, is something nature. Is something yes. blue, is simply uh, outwardly because the sky is sky blue, is blue, right? Yes, yes. And then when you think of black, mm -hmm. something very dark and mm. powerful. Mm. So just imagine if you convert them to music mm. using different elements from the world, which I will play. I will play the sitar. It. Yeah, mm. I play the sitar. And on sitar, they will be percussions. I'm a very percussive person. Mm. I'll be playing drums and congas and mm. chimbes and all these kind of things. And I'm going to bring in some Western ensemble stuff, like, you know, like violin ensemble, that kind wow. of thing. Okay. So just imagine a mix of um, some uh, sounds from Ravi Shankar, wow. some um, sound from some Western classical, classical. stuff, mm -hmm. and also mixed with very African mm. uh, beat kind of thing, mm. right? If, if you all bring this all together mm. to represent different colors, that's what my album is about. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So mm. that's my album. Mm. I don't know what to call it. And one okay. thing about music album is oh. uh, the more time is going by, people are more into pop songs and songs and songs. There's less listener for music per se. Mm. But I'm sure I will find some listeners Mm. Who would like to listen to music only? So there's no vocal okay. elements of song. Mm. These are music mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The second uh, thing I'll be working on, I've started writing it already. It's, mm. it's a very interesting kind of deviation from my happiness book. Mm. It's called The Women of Shane Buddy. So now that book is essentially uh, based off a family, a Shane family, a fictitious family. No offense to any saints out there. It's like a fictitious family in Kolkata. Okay. And the story starts off mm. with this centenary, this mm. uh, woman who mm. just turned 100 years old. Mm. And the local club people, they want to, you know, mm. commemorate her 100 years and celebrate mm. it all. Mm. So she uh, sort of tells her story. Mm. And through that, mm. the entire story of the 100 years mm. that has gone by through her eyes, that mm. comes up. Achoo. And the wow. biggest irony about this story is, mm. like in those days, hundred years back, like mm. this long time back, women were literally sold off as marriages. I mean, that still happens in some villages. Like young maybe girl. young girls, young like maybe yes. seven yeah. year old girl, she got yes. married to a forty year old man. Okay. Like that. Mm. So she was like that. She's illiterate, and mm. like in those days, the mm. parents didn't take care of her education or anything. Just mm. married off her yeah, yeah. at a very seven year old or something like that. Mm. So the irony is, she goes on to become to to become the president of the book business that the family owns. 
So okay. that's the irony. Uh-huh. A person who has no education goes on to become one of the greatest moguls of book business. Book Kolkata. business, reading. Yeah, reading business. Oh, yeah. wow. And that's one side of the thing. And mm-hmm. she gets inspiration from all those famous figures that we have seen in mm-hmm. India. And as it happens, she serendipitously meets these people. She mm-hmm. meets Mahatma Gandhi. She meets Sarvana Tagore. She meets mm-hmm. Jawaharlal Nehru. Mm-hmm. And like in different contexts. And she was in the boss. She oh. meets all these people in different contexts. Uh-huh. So that's what makes the story very exciting. Mm-hmm. Very strange, if you may. Mm-hmm. But I have to do a bunch of research. Because I don't... Yes. I don't I don't want to offend anybody by saying anything wrong and mm-hmm. I don't want to be historically incorrect. Very so true. there are times when Subhash Chandra Bose, for example, mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, like he was house arrested and mm-hmm. then he escaped, all this kind of thing. I want to bring those aspects mm-hmm. to this, but I have to be very accurate on what really mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. There was time when Mahatma Gandhi visited Shanti Niketan yeah. for, uh, to meet Tagore. Mm-hmm. And Tagore mostly went uh, to Mahatma Ji for, you know, funding for Shanti Niketan. Not many oh, people okay. know this. Okay. But that's how the relationship came. Okay. And Tagore gave the name of Mahatma to Gandhi. Mm. And then all these kind of things happen. And then I have to be historically very accurate on things. That very happen. true, very true. But it's very exciting time for me. Mm. I'm writing and as I said, I the way to decompress, I decompress. <laughs> don't think of anything. And this crazy, weird mm. ideas self-propagate in my mind mm. and just start writing. Very true. So, yeah. yeah. So I know this book is going to be very different from the yes. two books you've uh, written yeah. and both were wonderful and I think uh, bringing to us different topics like uh, you know earlier on it was uh, on color prejudice the first one. Yeah. Second one is obviously happiness in uh, during the AI yeah. uh, uh, you know period and I think uh, elderly um, yeah. uh, the third one is obviously to do with how we sometimes, uh, you know, have a prejudice against elderly uh, people and we think, oh, they don't have much to give. Mm. Uh, but uh, from my personal uh, experiences, I know, uh, you know, if you sit by uh, side of an elderly, I think mm. there is much to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I think uh, looking forward to that book, yes, yes. Uh, Siddharth, I know time has gone way beyond but, uh, you know, I think we can go on and make make it into a two-part series, I'll say. <laughs> because I think it's almost gone over. Uh, so, you know, now talking about your foray into creativity mm. and uh, writing and music. Uh, what has been, I know everything is coming from within you. But any inspiration uh, that you derive from. Uh, as far as you know, uh, people are concerned, or you look up to anybody, or in your family. Yeah, absolutely. I can. I can start off with my family. I mean, mm. I, uh, my wife, the I mean, she is very supportive of all this. I mean, mm. She's a great singer, academic, all these yeah. kind of things. So mm. it's interesting. Like mm. uh, when I met her a long time back mm. in IIT, uh, mm. like more than twenty years ago, back, mm. um, I was doing all these things, but was not producing anything. Achha. Like I had all these thoughts and people were like, okay. oh, here's this guy in IIT, you can play 10 different instruments, okay. he talks and, hmm. but I, and she's very, the other kind of thing, she's very productive. She's oh. like, okay, she's okay. like, she does stuff. Planet. Uh, yeah, she's very academic, I mean, okay. academically productive, I'll say. Yeah. Right. And, and she has this objective that when you, hmm. when you do something, I mean, you should have some objective. I mean, hmm. so uh, that has been a big inspiration for me. That's why I have. All these thoughts were there, but to finish something, mm. to get something done and start on to the next thing. Mm. That has been a lot of our motivation. Mm. And also my father, he he is a researcher, he is retired now. Mm. But he has this interesting way of uh, combining literature and some aspects of science and ideology, all these kind of things. Mm. So if you were to start a conversation with him, it's mm. always about what Tagore said and why he said that. Mm. What, why Gandhi did something and mm. how does it really bring to our uh, culture and how language plays it all these kind mm. of things. So there was this intellectual and uh, kind of very interesting, mm. productive, artistic kind of environment in my mm-hmm. home for a long time. Mm-hmm. But you know, like as I grew up, some people have inspired me a lot. Like for example, uh, I'm a great fan of uh, cricketers Sachin Tendulkar and okay. uh, Saurabh Ganguly. Mm. And, like people are fans because of the way they play, but I'm fan more because of the resilience they have to prove oh, themselves. You know, okay. there's always a okay. uh, 
there's always a direction that okay mm. i did not do well i need to do better mm. i need to do this and do that and the way they inspire others mm. that's very mm. important mm. and i'm a big big fan of raven acting where i'm not to say all the knowledge that but i'm like <laughs> no you are right uh, yeah i'm like uh, in all my works you find some reference in, even in happiness to put to this reference yes. there in mm. some way mm-hmm. because i think he he goes beyond what i define mm. as a genius and a mm. proliferate writer and somebody so incredibly productive Mm. and um, other influences have been really i mean uh, book authors i mean when i was young i used to read a lot of enid blyton oh okay you know, yeah, like, yeah 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 we all young. have <laughs> yeah, we all have and okay. she is one prolific writer I mean. yeah 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 so yeah productivity and putting perspective together mm. to get things done mm. i have been influenced by many people yeah that is amazing to know and uh, you know channelizing your creativity the way you have mm. uh, everybody everybody cannot do that sometimes mm. you know they are capable but you know like you say your wife is so much uh, you know that mm. who helps you do it and so i think we have to have a good network of people we yeah. have to have that ob- yeah. uh, observation quality as mm. to and um, uh, you know gaining from each and every person we meet be it your father yeah. or be with be be yeah. your friend yeah. and be open to all kinds of knowledge yes. and i think what i see in siddharth is that uh, you know he has that and many a time you know these days like we say this is the information age and uh, you know data information is the new investment yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah, gold yeah. mine yeah. as far as business is concerned and Absolutely. also personal life is concerned uh, so you know there's also a lot of competition there um and like i think there was a chapter in siddha or a paragraph in siddhar's book that says you know humans are inherently competitive but you know comp- competitive to me is a negative word i'll say mm-hmm. you know and like what i'm listening to you he's achieved all of this not because he is competing with anybody that's what i get from your talk yeah, yeah. you know he is doing it for his own uh, uh, you know i think happiness i guess or mm-hmm. just finding his own balance yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, you know yes evolution and uh, revolution takes place due to comp- competitiveness and yeah. uh, also we cannot uh, you know negate that but as uh, on a personal front uh, you know i will say that uh, if you're doing something or you're uh, doing any venture do it because you want to do it first for yourself and then yeah. you know if you are furthering uh, other people or, or growth in society that is even better um yes yeah, that's you know that, that's just very well put actually okay. that's very put i mean mm-hmm. uh, one interesting thing i want to add here yeah, is sure. a different perspective like mm-hmm. if you look at uh, uh silicon silicon valley in general is a hub of innovation right very true so innovation you would say okay innovation needs some competition sure i mean if somebody <laughs> ai is an example mm-hmm. chat gpt comes up and then somebody else does it all this mm-hmm. but when it comes to creativity or create new stuff mm-hmm. especially in this artistic piece like music or mm-hmm. literature mm-hmm. then you said it very well that mm-hmm. competition is a last thing in the mind really yes i am not oh, maybe i am competing with myself that's different i want to become a yeah. better version of myself better version, yeah. i you know like one interesting thing about me i get disappointed with my own work mm-hmm. after some time i mean some people are like that mm-hmm. so recently i i gave uh, like music to some place in mm-hmm. uh, in uh, berlin also uh, gave music for a movie mm-hmm. which is oh. uh, yeah it's like okay. a short movie in la okay. they shot it they asked for a person who knows indian classical mm-hmm. and sitar and stuff okay. so i just did the music for them mm-hmm. it's going to come out it's pretty good mm-hmm. so now the interesting thing is every time i do the music mm-hmm. and then i hear back i'm like Uh, i could have done it <laughs> oh, okay yeah and, and other people don't observe it like mm-hmm. that they say oh this yeah. music was great thanks you for yeah. doing this and all that but i think to some extent i have to summarize here that there is no competition yet uh-huh. there is competition with myself to like to my previous self we have to go back mm-hmm. and do that work again i say you know what i am better i am a better sit now than <laughs> how i was before so if i were to redo it i would do it better probably uh-huh. and maybe that's what helps me keep doing stuff yeah. i i never get satisfied like mm-hmm. after i've uh, written these books and i think okay fine but there is some aspects mm-hmm. which i missed out in either of the book mm-hmm. so i need to complete myself and get that aspect out mm-hmm. 
and with music also i've done i have already had a music album i published that in 2014 Hmm. But when I look back, I'm like, what I did this? This is not good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> no, no, no. You that. generally, you know, you can't be the best critic of yourself. Uh, you, uh, you will look at your work uh, in a very different way. Like yeah. uh, you know, Amitabh has said, uh, even now, uh, you know, he doesn't feel satisfied with his work, and ah. that's what keeps him going. Yes. You know, so that's what you know, creativity does to yeah. you. You're never satisfied till yeah. <laughs> you know your work, yes. uh, whatever. So I think uh, this was a lovely conversation. Yes. Like I said, it's so easy to talk to him. So the <laughs> you know the time just went off like that. Uh, and uh, I hope to talk to you another time and uh, on your new book and your new ventures. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Siddharth, uh, for coming on off the cuff. And uh, listeners, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Wishing you a very very happy uh, new year, good health and happiness always. Uh, take care and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Shosha is a creative Indian restaurant located in the heart of Silicon Valley. Shosha is a woman-owned business that serves traditional Indian flavors assimilated with molecular gastronomy techniques. The best Indian bar with happy hours in the Bay Area serves handcrafted drinks inspired by flavors from India with modern craft cocktails that are presented in unique ways. Shosha is a modern take on traditional Indian cuisine. We specialize in corporate luncheon, anniversary celebrations, birthday parties, and catering. Do check us out for a memorable modern Indian dining experience. Shosha is located at 141 South Murphy Avenue in Sunnyvale, California.